Hi. So uh, there's, this is going to be a, a, a three-person presentation with lots of time for discussion, uh, at least ideally. Um, so I'm Dan Katz. We also have uh, Martin Fenner and Neil Chu Hong, and we'll all be uh, talking a little bit. Um, so to start off with, uh, so we're going to give an update on where we are with the Force 11 Software Citation Implementation Working Group. Um, and uh, just to point out that we've in general been working on GitHub, so everything more or less should be on GitHub, or which is linked from the Force 11 Working Group page. So if you can get to the group page, you can get to GitHub and you can get to all the materials, which um, does not include these slides yet, I don't believe, but will shortly after this. All right. So, uh, so we started off as a very uh, happy organization. I guess I, I should say that um, this is the follow-on to a different group that was the Force 11 Software Citation Group, and this is the Software Citation Implementation Group. And I'm going to kind of give a little background on the original group, and then we'll move into this group. So in the original group, we started off and we were very happy um, because we wanted to do something that we thought was going to be relatively easy to do and possible to do um, because we had the data citation group that was a year or two ahead of us and seemed like a model for how to move forward successfully. Uh, and so that was July of 2015 and in September of 2015, we had already built up a, a pretty good community with about 60 people, researchers, developers, publishers, repositories, repositorians, uh, librarians. And we had uh, lots of great discussion and, and people generally agreed on things and we did what I thought was fairly well and arrived at a consensus. Um, and, uh, and then we got even happier because we got a publication out in September of 2016 that was called um, uh, Software Citation Principles, very straightforward name. And we published this in PeerJ Computer Science and it's also on the Force 11 webpage for the old group. Um, and, and we kind of decided that was what that working group was supposed to do and we were done and we were very happy. Uh, so that was early 2017. And so the software citation principles, um, I'll just say this for people that haven't seen this, um, look somewhat similar to the data citation principles but are not the same because software is not data and for a variety of other reasons. Um, but we did start with the data citation principles and then we updated them based on the software use cases that we had looked at in that year and a half and a bunch of related work that we had also looked at. And then we updated that further based on working group discussions and community feedback and multiple drafts and, and lots of stuff and a workshop that was at Force 2016 in Portland. Um, so again, we came up with these six principles of importance, credit and attribution, unique identification, persistence, accessibility, and specificity. Um, and the paper talked about these and defined them reasonably well, and then also included probably something like four to five times more pages of discussion um, than the principles, and the discussion was intended to kind of help people figure out how to use the principles. Um, the principles are high level, the discussion was intended to go down a level further to make this actually practical and usable. Okay. Sorry, I don't remember where we're switching. <laughs> so, as part of this triple act. Um, so, once the software citation principles had been published and the first working group wrapped up, um, a new working group called the Software Citation Implementation Working Group, um, you can see the progression in titles here, um, was created to try and take take forward the work and the principles and get them rolled out and adopted. Um, and at this point, um, Dan stayed on as a uh, co-chair um, and was joined by myself and Martin Fenner as new co-chairs of uh, the new working group. And, and part of this was the realization that on their own, the principles were not enough. So uh, what we had was a really good document that provoked discussion, uh, got a lot of interest from different communities who were eager to try and understand how software citation might be applied in their different areas. Um, but there were some things that were missing. So the implementation working group was really set up to look at two things. One was to understand what was the extra bit of detail that, were miss that was missing from the principles to allow you to implement them. Um, and then the other thing was to work with different communities to actually implement the principles. So publishers, conferences, repositories, indexes, funders, um, and indeed all of the, the researchers as well. 
Um, and so this, this was still a very happy time for the group as we embarked on this big journey. Um, and in particular, um, we were very confident that the uh, small amount of detail that was needed was indeed a small amount of detail uh, and that we would have an 18 month period and uh, quickly wrap up with uh, further success. And, and you know, actually, it, it wasn't too bad. So um, uh, one of the things that did happen in the next few months was that we took the existing group of people um, and there were more people coming on board, again, from uh, publishers, from different research communities. Uh, we have a lot of diverse interests and ex expertise that are represented on the calls that we, uh, we run every month. Um, and I think part of that is because people are really interested in talking about software and software citation right now. It is, it is one of the hot topics and everyone has a perspective on how things fit together in this big ecosystem of scholarly communication and referencing and citation and credit. But we also talk about other things. So it links into things around reproducibility. It links into things around publisher workflows and so on. Um, and and a lot of different work has been done in this group. Um, and there's been a lot of coordination between this group and the other groups that are in related areas such as the RDA, um, in the uh, SPIN, the Software Preservation Network, in some of the things that are going on in Europe as well. So in particular, three things um, uh, came up. One is around metadata standards and translation and understanding how software might be represented in these and what metadata will be required for software citation. Um, so both the extensions to the data site schema, um, the code meta work um, to provide a JSON description of software, and the citation file format for human readable version of a software citation. Um, another thing is around uh, archiving of open source. Some of you will have heard of the Software Heritage Project, and indeed that spun off an extra working group um, um, along with the RDA, looking at how we do identifiers for software um, and identifiers that scale across um, very small objects um, and very many versions of um, software. Um, and we worked with communities, in particular with um, communities like astronomy, the earth sciences, mathematics, high energy physics, to pilot guidance for um, how they would do software citation. So it all looked really rosy. It looked like it was going very well. Um, but then we sort of have been taking stock over the last few months um, and one of the things we've realized is that actually each of these different uh, little successes have been quite isolated and the problem that we've been having here is trying to work out how we address some of the really big underlying challenges uh, that prevent something that's been successful in one area being adopted in another area. Um, and this is something that uh, came up in the workshop we ran yesterday which I can see a few people who were there um, were present at. Um, and now what we're trying to do is look and see where we move forward um, with this work so that perhaps we can identify some of these challenges and address them. So. So you clearly see a pattern that um, I'm at the tail end when we are sort of in the mess. Um, but um, I think, yeah, just to make sure this, we, we, we are not sort of frustrated with lack of progress, but it's just the realization that I think naive is the right word. This is a really complex topic and there's many, many issues and we are all just too engaged that we just take shortcuts, say let's focus on this one. But we, we as, as my previous speaker said, we go into issues of reproducibility, which is very relevant, um, preservation of software. All these things are important for citation, but of course you can spend years on that. Um, just some of the challenges that we identified and they're also addressed in this document that you saw a link on the previous slide, so you, once this is available, you can go to that. Or you just go, as um, Dan said at the beginning, to the GitHub repository. So that there's different kinds of software. In particular, we are mostly thinking open source, and there's many things we can do. But if it's closed source software, many things are different. Um, for example, how do you give identifiers to commercial software? Is that a different kind of identifier? Then there's, of course, unpublished and published software. So if you go to code repository, and pick something and use it, um, that there hasn't been a formal step of making this published, available, archived, etc. Um, then, of course, there's the ongoing issue uh, of citation metadata. You heard about code meta and citation file format, that traditionally code repositories 
uh, don't have all the metadata you need, in particular author information, um, in any detail, because the contribution to code is something very different than uh, that's sort of not necessarily reflected of in the intellectual work in doing software. Um, then, of course, um, if there is metadata, how do you access it, transport it, convert it to other formats, etc. And then, of course, this is the software citation implementation working group. Uh, we haven't talked much about software citations and how you track that and where you store that and where you find that, etc. And I think we're all quite technical people because we work with software, but we are not naive, not that naive, and we know <laughs> the real problem is never technology, but it's social. And, and I think, um, as is typical, that's why we at Force 11, this is really a cross crowd problem where it's not a particular community can solve this. This is not only all the ones listed here, but also there's different um, common practice at different domains. So I see a few people from astronomy here who have mostly sorted this out, but the community practices are very different than maybe in the digital humanities. And that's all something we have to um, keep uh, in mind and have to think about where we find something that works for everyone and where we need more special solutions. And I think the last slide is back to Dan. Okay, so yeah, so so in some ways we're in a fork in the road at this point and we're really trying to figure out how we're going to go forward and we wanted to make this part of the discussion um, really for the remaining time, which I don't have any idea how much that is, but 15 minutes, okay, so we're only five minutes over what we thought. Um, so there's two different things that we think we could potentially do. Uh, one is to basically continue to coordinate activities and we kind of declare ourselves uh, that, that after uh, another six months to a year of doing this, we've gotten to a point, we've coordinated a bunch of things, those things are all going forward independently, and they can communicate without a working group to, to help them. And we're done and we're happy. Um, the other thing that we could do is to say that, that these underlying problems are not easy to solve and they're going to take a lot of work and are going to involve a lot more coordination that will need to happen over a longer period. Um, and to say that this is not something that this is going to, that this uh, six month longer working group is going to solve, but we need to find a different framework in order to, to, to keep addressing these things. Um, and I think in both cases, we've also realized that we've been doing this um, on an entirely volunteer basis and entirely virtually, and that that probably has gotten to a point where it needs to change a little bit to, uh, to get a, a, at least a burst more energy to continue it. Um, and so um, I was hoping actually in this room there might be uh, people from funding agencies or private foundations who would be <laughs> really excited to see this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if we've succeeded in that or not. Maybe we were in the wrong room. We should go back to the ballroom. Um, but uh, but in, in, in either case, I think either one of these we do, we would actually like to try to figure out how do we get funding and bring most of the working group together or as much as we can get in one place at one time uh, to talk about which of these go forward and in either case to make some progress along the way. So I think with that, um, we will stop talking and ask for um, comments or questions and these can be uh, very basic software citation questions, but even more ideally would be, what do you think we should do now? And where, where do you think the community is? And, uh, and if you've done something like this before, what, what have you done that was successful or that wasn't successful that you've learned from that we should be learning from? Thank you very much, very interesting. Maybe more of an idea. Did you ever try to contact like a a software developer company that is like used very often or a company that has like a certain interest in promoting itself as to okay we are doing this and if you support us if you support our project you might be able to promote your software within the scientific community have you ever tried something like that so okay so i guess i i would say that um i don't believe that we've done exactly what you've said um I think part of what we're trying to address is credit for software, uh, and most of the challenges with credit that I see uh, come in the academic world and not in the commercial world. Um, that's not 100% true, but mostly, and so it seems that a lot of people in the commercial world, at least um, in some, some open source, but closed source particularly, are driven by different incentives around credit and not by citations, and so it's it's not clear to me, but I'll let others answer as well, because I 
don't know that that was a very good answer. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'll, I'll answer it entirely. I thought your question was going to go slightly differently. Um, uh, and you were going to sort of say at the end uh, around how their software might fit into a software citation system. So um, uh, personally, I, I talk a lot with people like MathWorks who produce M MATLAB uh, around both uh, their interest in the um, scientific software community and also sponsorship and so on. Um, but as Dan said, I think one of the key things here is that uh, in some sense they already have all of the publicity they, they need. So when they sponsor, they sponsor because it's of interest to them as opposed to um, driving forward more sales of, of MATLAB. Um, but it is still an intriguing question because one of the things that I have talked to them about is, are you happy with the way that MATLAB is cited? Um, uh, because they, they provide a, a recommended citation, um, but in some sense, they have less need to track. Um, and it goes back to this idea of why are we citing software? Um, so they have less need to track the usage because um, it's easier for them to identify where their software is being used because as a commercial company, they know where they're selling the licenses. Um, so I don't think I've answered your question either. I don't know if Martin wants to try. I will just try to go a slightly different direction. And just a short comment, the previous working group, one of the co-chairs was working at GitHub at the time. And I think um, he's no longer working at GitHub. And I think that has also to do with how important is science for, um, for GitHub or general for software companies. And that's sort of my, my take on an answer, which is, are we trying to frame a problem as this is the academic craziness that only we care about? Or is it also that we address this slightly differently, that this is more a software question, for example. This is different from software dependencies, um, but if it's, it's sort of related of what's sort of what's needed to run this particular piece of software, what other software. That's, of course, highly interested in everybody doing software and open source software. And there is tools and people doing that, et cetera. So that's something we can think about in how much we have tunnel vision or in how much we just have problems that are specific to this community, which is a very small slice of software overall. Oh, OK, right. So I've been involved with this for ages. That's really cool. I'd love to get back involved. But like, it sounds like you guys got like, broad, and you got to a point where you're like, oh, it's much bigger than we thought. And now we've got many more open endpoints, and now you're at a decision point. And I know you're already smart. You've probably had this conversation before. So have you thought about what it might look like to just carve out like one area that you can attack and declare success within? And if you have thought about that, what's like the good candidate area? So that it could be something around not worrying about overly linked libraries, not worrying about some class of commercial software, but just focusing on the area where uh, there's challenges in getting academic credit for particular kinds of academic software. And what might that look like to get like a couple of really good successes to build momentum? I could have said that from up there. <laughs> no, it's OK. Um, yeah, but I, I think one of the things, um, the slide that uh, Martin talked around about um, the technical challenges kind of gives some sort of idea of where you can start scoping things down. So one thing very early on was uh, this is around um, citation for credit, not citation for reproducibility, citation for dependency, citation for other, other things there. Um, then you can kind of scope it down and say, this is citation for um, software that is uh, published, that is published openly, um, that is made available through identifiers and so on and can scope down down there. But even then you then have to go down into um, uh, communities perhaps, so communities that are well organized, that have a culture of, of already doing this uh, sort of thing for other objects. And at that point you can start hitting some successes. And I don't know, um, do you want to talk more specifically about some of the examples? Or I don't, in fact, there might be other people who are better uh, placed to talk about some specific successes in, in particular um, communities. Okay, but yeah. um, but I, I don't know. So, so that's kind of saying, if that happens, is that a success? It might be a small success, but I don't know that it's a success for software citation in general. Um, because it's maybe scoped it down so far that you've got to the, the smallest workable thing, but that's not of use to the majority of people. So, don't know. 
Um, so yeah, so I was just going to say that this uh, your your suggestion actually came up in the working group yesterday as well, uh, the workshop yesterday. Sorry, um, and it was one that I hadn't really thought about as much. Um, so some of this, I mean, I think this slide in particular really is based on what we were thinking about in the workshop, um, and that question is one that could be that kind of is hiding behind number one. Yeah. Is, is, is that, does that make sense? Um, the other thing I think that also came out of the workshop, which I don't feel like I had realized before, um, is this bottom piece that, that really, if we think of this as, a, as an architecture in some sense, it's kind of an hourglass architecture and metadata is the thing that's at the neck that's the important thing. And so I'm actually starting to think that, not that we can fix metadata very quickly, but that if we do continue for a longer time, that metadata needs to be a lot more central in terms of how we're really looking at a lot of the pieces. Um, because I feel like we've kind of looked at it from a lot of different levels, but that, that maybe is one that will be productive. So. Oops, sorry, sorry. I can't go any further. Just want to add one comment to your question. Um, in all the discussions we had, whether this was overall or specific aspects, like let's say code matter, what always came up as biggest need is documentation because at the end of the day a lot of what needs to be done can be done today but it's a little bit too obscure and you have to spend too much time this community to do this and as a publisher or as a repository maybe you heard a story but basically I think you could do 80% of the things with just laying out clearly what can be done and so forth and that's sort of that I think is, is one top priority. Uh, metadata, I totally agree, but I would take that as even more important. So since there are three of us, um, we should have at least two opinions, so I'm going to disagree. Uh, <laughs> um, and say, we should, yeah, maybe four opinions. Um, uh, so from my point of view, I think that's, I feel like the documentation is actually what we were trying to do originally, and, and I felt like, I do feel like as soon as we actually start trying to do the documentation, then we start realizing that nothing is as simple as we thought it was going to be and we can't actually write it down because we don't know the answers. Um, so I, I'm not very sure, actually. I, I think that there really are a lot of fundamental problems that we have to answer before we can write documentation about the answers. So I assume by just the virtue of being here that everybody agrees uh, that there should be direct credit uh, given for uh, software citations, uh, you know, by tenure committees, by the academic community as a whole. However, that's obviously not the case, right? Publications are the currency of academia, and even though we should just be able to cite code, we can't. Uh, and there's, there's got to be a road from here to there. So I wonder, is a worthwhile place to put energy making these specs such that they improve the lives of people writing papers about tools and publishers publishing papers about tools. Because I, I, it seems to me that if we put energy into that, then that starts to pave the way towards the eventual. <coughs> So, uh, I, yeah, so I, I think I agree with you in general. Um, I would also, I mean, I, I think the third piece really is people that are developing the tools, right? That they have a way of making their tools citable that makes all those other things happen, um, I think is also important. And, and the problem, again, um, sorry, I don't want to make this sound negative because there's a lot of stuff that's happened that's really very positive. But the problem is that every time we start to figure out what are the three things we need to do, we realize that there's really four and then there's really five and, and so forth. And so, it's, I, I mean, I think it's at a very high level um, saying what you're saying makes sense and, and kind of, again, what you were saying as well, just kind of saying what's a small piece we can do is great. But it just ends up being really hard to, to, say, to find a small piece that doesn't actually expand to everything again very quickly. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that there also are a number of activities, including uh, some workshops that I was running, uh, the institute that Neil leads, uh, an institute that we're trying to create in the US, um, that would like to address specifically the role of software in tenure decisions um, and study what is done today uh, and then provide uh, sample language that can be used um, by different committees to, to update their, their processes. So I, I think that, again, that's another social challenge that's kind of 
not one of citation itself, but around citation and, and in some of our documentation, we do talk about institutions as one of the, the stakeholders as well, and that's part of the thing we're thinking about is, is how would institutions actually use this and how do we put it in a format that makes it easy for them to understand and to, to work with. I will switch hats and we'll be timekeeper for a second. We have maybe one or two more minutes before we go to the keynote, which I suggest you ask your questions and we try to be short in our answers this time. <laughs> uh, well, I just want to, you know, I like the, the balance of technical and social. The interesting thing is that the, the use case for, uh, one of the use cases that, that, that is discussed a lot in this topic area is citation and credit. And the, the people that benefit from that are the developers. Uh, I, I agree that metadata is fundamental, but a lot of things like code meta, it turns out, are mostly about citing things. So they help the developers, but they, there's not much focus there on helping users um, access the software and, and actually be able to understand it and use it and trust it. And so I agree with Dan that, that metadata is fundamental, but it has to go beyond metadata for citing things to metadata for understanding and using and trusting things. Okay, so, so my very quick answer is that I feel like actually a lot of my job in this group has been to say that I feel like things are out of scope and to try to get people to agree not to talk about them. <laughs> and, and I think and what you're saying I think is one of those that I would say um, is, is just expands the scope of what we're doing to a point at which we can't make progress on it effectively. Uh, not that it's not important, but that it's a different group or a larger group or a follow-on group or something like that that should address this. And we should try to figure out for the smallest thing we can, can we make progress? Okay, now really quick because we don't want to miss a keynote. Well, I'll quickly try to sketch involvement in fluidity and astronomy that might be transferable to other disciplines. We started off with identifying workflows for the different st stakeholders. We applied for a grant and got a grant with the Sloan Foundation, which we mostly paid for implementing those different workflows means uh, one workflow in the PDS for uh, detecting software citations and another workflow within Sonodo um, to uh, do their work uh, registering metadata with data sites and developing a, a broker system. And uh, that seem, seems to be working really well. And maybe there we can end on a success. Yes. So <laughs> thank you.